when did you have an idea that if Aaron came back to play, he was going to try to get you back here? Uh, I don't know exactly the timeline. We had discussed it. You know, obviously, we, we talk a lot. He's one of my closest friends. I uh, consider him family. You know, he stood in my wedding. So we talk pretty often. And, you know, we, we always talked about having the opportunity to play together again. And, you know, we, we didn't know how that was going to be, how it was going to happen. But we always hoped that we would have the opportunity to get back together at some point. How did it feel to walk back in this building? It felt like I never left. I mean, it, you know, when, when I was pulling into the stadium, um, Obviously, there's been some changes uh, with Titletown and the Rush Center, and I'm just like a little kid looking around and everything, and uh, just so excited. But once I got into the building, you know, we have some new pictures up and everything like that, but um, it felt like it was just another day. And um, it really, that was a realization for me whenever I walked in, and it was like, I'm, wow, I'm actually here, and it, it feels good to be back. There's a, a photo that's been in the rounds ever, ever since three years ago of you and Aaron embracing during that last game that you had together at Lambeau Field. What was the emotion of that moment? And can you contrast that for us to the moment today when you're back on a practice field with Aaron after all that time in between wondering if you'd ever get this chance and now having it? Uh, well, that, that moment uh, I think is just it's a culmination of um, just the emotion of um, – how much I felt like I had put into this, uh, to this place, into the game uh, that I love uh, playing here. Uh, you all saw me grow up from a 20-year-old kid to, you know, a 30-year-old man uh, with two kids. Uh, so, I, I think just all those different memories of being on Limbo Field and uh, the moments that I had, I, I had a feeling that that was going to be my last time on that on that um, that sideline in that jersey, and. You know, obviously, you know, they had drafted three receivers uh, that year, and I dealt with injuries throughout the entire season. Um, came back too early, uh, tried to play through when I shouldn't have been on the field, and um, that, that's all on me, uh, you know, trying to force my way back into it. Uh, but but that's, that's the part of it. That, that's the part of it that you see. And uh, just the contrast now, you see a smile on my face, and I don't have tears. I had tears yesterday. I definitely had tears yesterday um, whenever I got in the car uh, headed to the airport. I think it really sunk in for me then, and I just broke down. My wife was sitting there with me. She was crying, too, because I think she's more excited than I am to be back. Um, we, we love this place. We love this city. Um, it, it's a special place. It will always be a special place to me. I know Aaron and, and Goody had an awful lot to do with resolving this thing, but do you in any way feel you're the reason he's back here? Uh, no, that, 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 would be, that would be way, way, way too egotistical for me to think that I'm the reason. Uh, I think there was a lot of pieces that's in play uh, with, with him coming back. And I know how much he cares about this organization. I know how much he cares about this team. And he wasn't going to leave his teammates hanging. Uh, you know, I, I think the only thing that could have been different was him retiring. Um, you know, and I think that was a real thing. Uh, I, just the conversations that we had over the course. Uh, I kind of felt like I was in the same boat. You know, I didn't have the, the same passion and love and, and just being able to um, hash it out together and, and have an understanding of, you know, what we want to accomplish. And um, as time went on, realizing um, how much love we still have for this game and, um, you know, situations change and, and opportunities arise. And I'm just glad to be a part of um, this opportunity that we have before us this year. So, Randall, can you take us back or um, kind of relive um, your time with a little kid named Amari Rogers? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amari, Amari's great. Um, I've known him since he was probably about 12 or 13. He used to come up uh, to some of the games when I was at Kentucky. He'd be in the locker room. He would be running around on the practice field. Um, he had a crazy work ethic for, for a 12-year or 13-year-old at the time. Um, and just watching him grow has, has been a blessing. Uh, I, I got so much respect for him as a person and uh, just to see how much he's accomplished. He went to uh, school uh, about 15 minutes from me. Uh, he, he grew up in Knoxville, grew up in Alcoa, about 12 minutes away. And, um, you know, watching him progress through his high school days and 
um, you know, he's he's one person I, I can say I'm a little bigger than. So to, so to you know, <laughs> for for us as you know smaller guys uh, to to accomplish such great feats and to become a five star athlete and to go to Clemson and play for a national championship team and and be a big piece of of that uh, and now him being drafted here, I, I expect to see the, con the continued progress of his growth and I hope to be a part of that. I hope that I can be what Greg Jennings and Donald Driver and those guys were for me. Um, you know, that's, that's the approach that I'm taking when I walk in here. I'm gonna give him every tool that was given to me and uh, we'll see what happens with him. Hey, Jared, I'm not sure how familiar you are with Matt's schemes and all the ins and outs of it, but when you kind of see some of the jet motion stuff, some of the stuff he does across the middle, does it kind of excite you in terms of, you know, how your skill set could potentially fit into to the, you know, the overall? For sure, for sure. Uh, there, there's a lot of uh, carryover. Um, you know, I think the terminology is, is going to be a big piece for me to pick up and how fast I'm able to progress through that. I'm a couple days behind, obviously, with uh, the installs getting in a little bit late. So, um, but as far as his offensive scheme, it's, it's, it fits who I am. It fits my, my, um, my uh, ability. Um, and uh, along with Mari, I think that finding ways to, to get us involved and, and, and being able to help in the, the presence that we'll be able to provide on the field, I think would be huge for, for us going forward. How do you balance that mentorship with Amari with the very real fact that you guys are both slot receivers and, and you're probably going to be taking some snaps away from them too? Uh, you know, it's funny that this this game is the 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 biggest team game of any sport in my eyes. Uh, there's no one person that can make everything go um, and win a game, win a Super Bowl by himself. Um, and whenever I think about that, I'm a piece to this puzzle. Uh, I'm not the whole picture. I'm a very small piece, and there's. 90 other guys in that locker room right now that are pieces as well. And I'm just trying to do my part and, and make sure that I'm able to help him to do his part and to be the best that he can be. So whenever the, the lights come on and we're on the field, we're finding ways to win games. I don't care about how many snaps I get. I don't care how many catches. I don't care how many yards, touchdowns. If you don't know that about me by now, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, I'm here to win a championship with a football team. I don't care about Pro Bowls. I don't care about all pro. I don't care about any of those things. It's about finding a way to win a championship and, and doing my piece, uh, whether it be on the field or mentoring or leadership or uh, special teams or whatever, whatever is asked of me, I, I will be there and I'll do it. Hey Randall, this is a fantastic feel-good story, and I love a good feel-good story. But the general manager did stand up there this morning, and he didn't make any bones about it. He said, you're here to make Aaron Rodgers happy and that he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have traded for you if Aaron didn't want you. Um, how does that make you feel? Um, about the same way it made me feel when uh, I signed with Dallas and I was waiting, hoping for another opportunity to come back. Um, that didn't happen, but you know, we're here and, and I'm back. That's in the past. It's about today, it's about moving forward. It's about being the best that we can be today uh, for this team um, and, and, and try to find a way to win a championship. None of the other stuff matters. We can talk about it all we want. Um, there can be stories on it. You can say whatever you want, but I'm going to come here. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to be the best teammate I can be. I'm going to continue to be the person that I am. And hopefully I can bring some positivity and some energy around and, and be who I am. Aaron talked about, yeah, Aaron talked about yesterday the, the way guys are treated on their way out. He named you a, a lot of guys that, that were treated disrespectfully on the way out. Did, did that leave any, any hurt feelings? With Look, this is a business. At the end of the day, it's a business. Um, if we were in high school, yeah, we could maybe say that. Uh, college, is, college is a business too, so um, you know things happen on that end as well. Uh, and I understand that. I get that. I get the business. I get the numbers. I get, the, I get all of that. I understand it. I talk to my agent all the time. I, one of my best friends is an agent. And we discuss contracts, negotiating, all those, all those things. Um, you know, I, I hope to one day be able to, you know, after life, after football life, to, to maybe get into the business side. Um, so I, I get that. I understand it. I understand the whole process of it. So, um, you know, I see it, and it is what it is. Randall, you mentioned that you and Aaron had discussed this possibility 
know, throughout some parts of the office. <clears throat> when did you know? Well, how did you find out? When, 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 how did you find out this is actually happening? Uh, well, I was taking a nap, <laughs> and I get a phone call, and it's a number I didn't know, and my heart drops because I'm thinking, is this really happening? So I, I answered her phone, and it was a reporter, and she was asking me about the Trey Wingo uh, tweet or whatever. And I had, I was oblivious to it, didn't know anything about it. She told me what the tweet said. I, um, I my agent started calling me. I, I, I got on the phone with her, talked to my agent. And I think that's when it was like, it really set in like, wow, this might actually happen. Randall, when you look at your, your first stint in Green Bay, you made a lot of highlights, and I've seen a lot of them being replayed the last few days, but it also takes me back to your debut against the Saints 10 years ago, starting your career with the Bang in Green Bay. You look at week one with this team, your second act with the Packers against the Saints. Do you see that those gears turning in your head as well? And are, How much are you looking forward to putting on that helmet in a game with this team again against the same team that you debuted against? For sure, uh, that was that was a special moment. It kind of feels like I'm walking into the same situation ten years later, right? Uh, I'm coming in right at training camp, just like my rookie year. It was a lockout year. We came right into training camp, and I'm having to pick up everything so fast, uh, trying to find my role on the team, um, trying to see where I fit into the puzzle, and and trying to make a way for myself to get on the field. Uh, with a lot of talented receivers like what we have right now in the locker room. So there's a lot of similarities, and, you know, really I'm just right now taking it hour by hour. You know, it's, it's been you – know, I don't have my watch on, but I got in the building at like 6 p.m. last night, and I've just been like this the entire time, trying to catch up with people, trying to uh, get the installs and, and crunch um, all, the, all the information uh, with this new scheme. And – uh, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. But, you know, I just take it an hour at a time and, and try to do the best that I can in every minute. We're going to have two more from in the room, and then we're going to have to take a couple Zoom. You said how much is for you being back here. But kind of after the last year in Houston, for you as a football player, what is it like to kind of have this stability now and, and be on a championship contender once again? Uh, I can breathe again. Uh, you know, I'm, I've, I've seen the other side. <laughs> and I'm excited to be back here, and I, I'm excited. I, I'm smiling. It's funny. My teammates say, you act like you just got out of prison. I said, well, you know, uh, I'm, I'm very, very, very excited to be here. Uh, you know, I, and that's nothing, that's, nothing against, that's nothing against Houston. You know, wh whenever I talk about uh, that, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of um, Green Bay is like a Fortune 500 company. And uh, the Texans are a new franchise. They're a startup that's, that's figuring out their way. And, and I think that uh, the moves that they made uh, when, when they brought Casario in and Coach Coley, I think that they're on a the path. Uh, I think they have a plan in place. And I saw, saw, saw a lot of things changing over the past uh, you know, four months that I was there. You know, I've been rehabbing the entire offseason, so I saw all the different changes. And I know that they're, they're doing right. Um, and they're going and they're trending in the right direction. So they, they're, they're still working through some things, but I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for them as well. Randall, all those years you were here, I would see you as a taking care of this guy in practice here. Focus, uh, Aaron Rodgers, trusted teammate and friend, iconic plays. A couple of breakdowns of plays after a game when you're on your way. Um, you know, that, just Randall Cobb's taking care of Randall Cobb. On your plane right here, have you thought about what am I going to do differently the second time around? Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I think um, when you look at NFL co careers and you look at players' careers, uh, you know, everybody always talks about getting to that mountaintop, getting to that point of success and, and, and feeling that and having that. But I think it's important to understand that as us players, our, our goal is to plateau, is to get to a certain point and be able to hold that and be consistent. And my career, my eight years were a little up and down. You know, I had injuries, I dealt with things, and uh, it's part of it. It's part of, it's part of the deal. But I, I think as walking into this building today, my, I'm trying to be as consistent as I can. Um, you know, I, I felt my, my past two years, my, my time in Dallas, uh, I felt a resurgence. I felt a lot better. 
Um, and maybe, maybe it's what I needed. I needed to open up my eyes, to see different things, to be put in different positions, to learn a little bit about myself. And I think being able to leave and now come back, I know myself better and I know what I need and I, I know what I have to do uh, to put myself in the best position. Marie Straten, the first guy to greet you at the door, he kind of needs a return, or, you know, is that in your future again? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, we talked about that after practice, um, you know, getting back there and catching some punts and stuff. You know, obviously, uh, I'm just getting acclimated. I got off the plane at 5 p.m. yesterday, and we're just trying. Today was just, uh, I was basically out there. I was wearing somebody else's helmet. I was in somebody else's cleats. My stuff hasn't got here yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely it's definitely a little different, uh, but you know that's that's the, that's part of it, and we'll get it figured out, and I'll be ready to roll. Hey, Randall, um, I know the Press Gazette covers Packers uh, real estate very well, so I know your house sold, right? Um, it did, unfortunately. So what do I exactly? Is I would kept it. What's the plan with Ida and the kids, and, and how are you going to go about this? Oh uh, well, my my firstborn, Caspian, his birthday is August tenth, and he was born here in Green Bay. So we're hoping that we can get him back up here, uh, hopefully by family night. But if not, at least by his birthday, um, I think that would be special uh, just to have him back up here. But they'll definitely be coming. Uh, my kids aren't in school yet. Uh, well, my, Caspian's in Montessori, so he's he's um, he's going to some what school, but. Um, our goal is to is to get them up here as fast as we can. Well, the market's pretty hot in Green Bay, apparently, so nobody wants to rent right now. So if you know anybody out there, please, please, uh, looking looking for a roommate or anything, please. <laughs> I got some kids <laughs> that test your patience every now and then, but. <laughs> nah. uh, we'll start with Steve McCarty. Welcome back. I was just wondering, you talked about Amari's work ethic and how extraordinary work ethic he had in 12 and 13. I'm just wondering if you have any examples of that, how to kind of show, showcase that work ethic as a kid when you were first met him. Uh, name me a kid um, that you know that is on a college practice field doing ladder drills, uh, going through receiver workouts with his dad. Um, it's not many that I can name. And not like mad about it and huff and puffing, but wanting more, like finishing and, and wanting to do more. That, that's just the type of kid he is. Um, he's really smart. You know, I was, when we were, they were running plays today, he would come back to, and, and I would ask him, hey, what, what do you have on this? And, you know, he, he's telling me right now. So he's helping get me up to speed. It's a two-way street. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot that I have to learn from him. And that's another reason I'm excited, because there's some things that he does really well uh, with his releases and his route running. And I'm, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to watch him and, and be able to learn from his, him as well. And one more from Zen, Chris Roth. Hey, Randall, welcome back. Uh, you mentioned that Dallas, what that was like for you. I think you had 55 catches that year. You had 38 last year. Uh, Coach LaFleur this morning pointed out how well he played against them. In your mind, I know you guys are prideful. What's left in the tank? Um, a lot. I'm, I'm only 30. Uh, I know that <laughs> may surprise you, uh, but I, I still think I have a lot in the tank. And, you know, we'll see how this goes. Uh, I would rather let my play speak for it and then, than my words. So I'll leave that at that, and, and we'll see what happens.